Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things or Sound Sit Good and if you uh, are see, looking at this video you probably don't need to see that. What we're doing here is I'm going to add a new layer I'm recording in on Smooth Draw and Camtasia and I'm going to go through what I did as a kind of a mine part if you would. I can't use that word. Uh, uh, what a conjugate is. And a conjugate we're going to figure it out in a little bit, but if we have a complex conjugate um, in three dimensions or for four dimensional number, which is a real and then a three dimensional imaginary vector, three dimensional imaginary vector, it's actually a subset of a real and one dimensional imaginary vector and you're going to see why in a little bit. So let me first go through and do this uh, on the theory that I did know what I was talking about and I was stepping all over myself that the conjugate is the number that you multiply by your number or your vector by to get the square of the magnitude. Alright so let's do it this way. We're just going to do the first one and this is going to be we're going to do 1 plus i and so this is going to be 1 plus 1i1 one one in the real direction and 1 in the i direction. And I'm going to do that, multiply that by its conjugate, which is going to be 1 minus i. And so what I'm doing here as I put this up, right? Again, we're using the lattice form, if you would. We're going to multiply these together, and we're going to end up with a real times a real is a real. We have one there. First off, if we know that this is one this way and one this way, we know that the magnitude is the square root of two or the Pythagorean number. And so we should end up with a total of two if we want the square of the magnitude when we finish this out. So one times one is one. One times i is in fact one i, but now we're just going to go ahead and do the colors again. One times i, these are both going to be in the i direction. And one times minus one is minus one. So let me finish up with the red here. So we have real, i, i, and real. Because real time real is i is real, and real times i is i and real times i is i and i times i is minus one and so when we have minus one times one we have minus one is the value here and one times one uh, let me go that edit undo that edit undo because that is going to be a real number i have to go back here and no, 1 times 1 is minus 1, but it's going to be real. So it's a minus 1, but of course i times i is i squared. And so we have a negative there. And you can see where the 2 is going to merge here. Our guess is that these should offset each other because if we multiply a vector by its conjugate, you should get a real number. Um, and that's what you originally learned to do with this two-dimensional vector here. So we have 1 times i is going to be in the i, so it's going to be red. We've been doing the red thing. And so this is 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. And really you don't care. This is real and real. And so you have these guys cancel out. And so the answer turns out to be 2, Okay, which you kind of know. And you probably did it another way, right? So the answer is 2 plus 0. I'll go with 0. 2 plus 0, i, which is equal to 2. So we kind of knew that this was a vector. Remember, the original vector is 1 plus i, which is a vector that's, if you look at the real and the imaginary here, it's a vector that looks like that. It's 1 in this direction, 1 in that direction. That's the square root of 2. So we know that multiplying a vector by its conjugate should get you the square of the magnitude, and we proved it. Now the question becomes, how do we do that same with the vector that we've looked at in some of these other videos, which is a 1, 2, 3, 4 vector in four-dimensional space, if you want to think about that. And so we're going to go ahead and once again put this as 1 here, and I'll go ahead and put the 1 there. And then just saving myself on switching pens, I'm going to grab the red. 
right? And I'm gonna, hey, this is two, and the conjugate, you switch the sign on all of the imaginary components. And so as you go to here, go back and forth, this is three, and this of course is minus three, and the way we do this. And why I'm doing this is in a video I had done something called a sandwich product and I lost sight of the fact that you've got to multiply the vector by its exact conjugate. No sandwich product involved. And so I never did. So what we have here is four and minus four. And what we should end up with when we're done is a magnitude that's equal to one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared. That's what it should be, and it should be just real, no imaginary, if in fact my memory, and I think it is correct, of what the conjugate, uh, complex conjugate is of a, a vector. So that said, let's go ahead and go through this, uh, and you can kind of zoom forward to the end and see if it's in fact right, but we're going to first do the real values. So the real values are going to be in yellow, if you remember. We're going to pick up the yellow here. And we're going to go back and forth. So 1 times 1 is 1. And 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. And 3 times minus 3 is, in fact, minus 9. And 4 times minus 4 is minus 16. If you remember, these are all going to be the negative because they're the i squareds. Now what I'd like to do if I was really smart on my, I would have kept going backwards, it's all these negatives that you see there, so I wouldn't have to recalculate those each time, but I'll keep doing it this last time, and then I'll make another layer, which keeps track of which are negative. This effectively would be done in a calculator, in a computer program, in code, because where we're heading with this is we're gonna code all this up in a couple of different languages, and also visualize it in 3D space, um, because in fact, rotating uh, using quaternions to do rotations is something that we can actually do in our brains pretty pretty well. Um, the, the end effect, which is to do rotation in 3D space about an arbitrary vector. All right, so now we're going to do the red. So we're going to go ahead and grab the red here. Okay, we're going to go back and forth here. Now we know that red times real times i is also i, and real times i is also i. And then also... I think they become here and here. We know that K times J is going to be I. So that's going to be these two areas here that we're dealing with. All right, so we're going to do this. First, we're going to know that H I, I J K times J is going to be minus 12. And J times K is minus 12. And even without going beyond this, we realize that one of these is going to be negative, and so when we add them up together, they're going to fade away, and those are going to fade away. We'll go ahead through it. So if we know j times k, and our k times j is going to be a minus i, right? And j times k is a plus i. So if we notice here, as I turn that layer thing back on, and See that negative comes right back. So we're good there. And these are all going to wash out. So we're looking pretty good. And in the end, we could have almost intuitively known that along here, which would more or less be called, it looks like the trace, we actually have the squares of each of those. So if each of the rest of these kind of turn out to be balance out, we get what we kind of knew was the case with the conjugate. Back to the definition of the conjugate is, in fact, the vector that multiplied by your given vector gives you the square of the magnitude of the vector. All right, so let's see if we can do the rest of these. We're going to go to green now. Green. Close. All right, working on a Wacom tablet. This is obviously 3, and this is obviously minus 3. That's looking pretty good because they balance. Now we're in this kind of green. Nice pattern starts to merge when you got the colors. Four times there is minus eight. And we have four times there is minus eight. But in fact, remember one of them, if we go back, was gonna convert to be negative. It says it's this one. Let's see if that's right. I times K is minus J. But K times I is J. So you see those fall away. So we're looking pretty good in what we started to realize that we are 
basically I have another definition for our 390 math facts from my kids before you get the car. At least for my second daughter. My first daughter has done great. And so she'll catch up to those 390 facts when she's done doing some cool quaternion rotation in her dance class. That said, now we're going to go down and do the rest of these. And so we're now in the kind of the K direction or the blue direction. Remember, this is a, we've mapped we've mapped when we're doing this. We're often mapping real 3D space to the imaginary vector. So you'll see when we start dealing with. Uh, the trigonometry of this. All right, so that said, now we have four times real is, of course, four and minus four and minus four. Boy, those balance out pretty nicely. And then you have three times three. Now that's going to be a minus six, and we're going to guess that this is also going to be a minus six. But remember, if we realize that i times j equals minus j times i, etc., we have now j times i is minus k, right? But i times j is k, and so these balance out. So you end up with, turns out to be 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16, 25, 30, right? And it's a real number, so I'm going to go edit, undo. So I've got to go back to my real. I think red is yellow is good for real. And it equals the 30. And those of you who don't know that you can use the Pythagorean theorem in more than two dimensions, uh, go out and look at better explain Khalid's uh, explanation of it. But basically, the way you get the magnitude of a vector is take the vector transpose, take the column vector transpose times its times the column vector and then take the square root. That's how you get it. And so you're going to see that this does turn out. So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. You can see that happening right here. So we know that the definition of the conjugate is the vector conjugate of a vector is the vector that multiplied by the vector gets you the square of the magnitude. And that usually works out this way. If your vector is 1 plus i, the conjugate is 1 minus i. If your vector is 1 plus i plus j plus k, the conjugate is 1 minus i minus j minus k. So you flip the signs on all the unreal parts and you're good to go. You'll also probably have first have seen this term of the conjugate when you start talking about radicals, where you use the con the, the opposite of the, the the conjugate of one minus the square root of two is one plus the square root of two, and you probably hopefully learned that all the way back when you started knowing that the cosines and the sines of some of the major divisions of the circle, you start ending up with square roots of twos and threes and being involved. Thanks for listening.